uh good afternoon so how was your exam kaisa <coughs> tha paper aasan tha mushkil tha to kaisa laga tum logo ko acha tha okay good afternoon sir good sir afternoon. it was nice sir okay good <coughs> so uh, we have to do one more chapter i mean uh, क्लास टू हम लोग कर रहे थे ना तो क्लास टू अभी फिनिश करते हैं देन एक और चैप्टर करना है तो एम सेम में तुम्हारा टोटल ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर आएगा मतलब टेन तक तो किया ही तुम लोगों ने मिड सेम में तो टू मोर चैप्टर यू हैव टू क्लास टू एंड दिस लिस्ट मैनिपुलेशन तो उससे पहले हम देखते हैं इसमें कहाँ तक किया था हमने सो एब्सट्रैक्ट मेथड लास्ट क्लास में किया था लाइक तो यहाँ से स्टार्ट करते हैं सो लास्ट क्लास में ये देखा था हमने एब्सट्रैक्ट मेथड सो लाइक एरिया एंड पैरामीटर दिस टू वर्ड एब्सट्रैक्ट मेथड इन द क्लास सेप ठीक है तो एक बार देख लेते हैं यहाँ से ओके सो यहाँ से स्टार्ट करते हैं अभी अब स्टार्ट मतलब किया था लास्ट क्लास में सो एट्रीब्यूट रिजोल्यूशन ऑर्डर फॉर इनहेरिटेंस ओके सो इसमें क्या है कि न्यू स्टाइल क्लास इनहेरिट्स फ्रॉम अ बिल्ट इन क्लास ऑब्जेक्ट ओके सो विल सी अ प्रोग्राम फर्स्ट लेट सी द पी पी टी देन इन द न्यू स्टाइल क्लासेस टू एक्सेस एन एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट पाइथन टिपिकली लुक्स फॉर इट इन द नेम स्पेस ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट इट then in the namespace of class then in the namespace of uh, super class in order uh, in the order in which they are derived and so on okay jaise iska ek example dekhna hai so we have this program check <coughs> so what we have a uh, class a we have defined and the test value is assigned 20 now we are defining class b1 which is derived class of the base class a so here we are going to just pass and in class b2 uh, class b2 is derived class of base class a then we are de uh, defining class c and class c is derived class of uh, base class b1 and b2 then we are uh, returning the string output as string uh, form of self dot test so test value test like here it is 20 now uh, c1 is object of the class c 
and uh, printing C1. So C1 will return value of test. And now, so what will happen here actually? Uh, it will search for the value of test. So uh, uh, we were looking the order of in uh, so we were actually looking order of inheritance or resolution order for inheritance. So uh, we have many examples. So in this case. First, it will uh, try to find the value of test in the class C. If it is not found, then it will search in class B1. So first B1. Right? So we have written B1 first. So it will first search in B1. It is not found, then it will search in B2. Okay, here. And then if it is not found here, then it will search in super class A. And it is 20. So that's why when we run the program, it returns 20 okay now in the next uh, you can see here so what we are doing again same thing uh, class a test is assigned 20 in class b1 which is derived class of uh, base class a and test is assigned 30 uh, in class b2 uh, just we have written pass and class c is a derived class of b1 and b2 and again we are returning value of test c1 is object of class c and printing c1 so it will return value of test so first it will search it in the class c so in class c we have not given value of test then it will search in class b1 and in class v1 it is 30 so it is found here so it will print 30 it will not search you know, after this so it will print what 30 so if we run it so uh, you can check so 30 is the value of test so output is 30 here now if you go more like here check so here what we are doing same class a test value is 20 and class b1 test is 30 in class b2 test is 50 in class uh, c uh, just we are printing the value of test so again c1 is the object of class c we are printing c1 so it will search the value of uh, test in class c first so it is not defined in the class C, the value of uh, C is, uh, test is not given. So then it will search in, uh, look here, so I have written B2 first. So if I make it B1 first and B2 last. So uh, first it will search in C, then in B1. Okay, so first it will search in B1 because first I have written B1. If it is first in B2, then it will first search in B2. So in B1 it will find 30. So now if I run this, so this is 50 because uh, we have changed that. So now if I run it, it will return to you 30. So answer will be 30 now. Okay, because first it will search in C. Uh, it is not a test value is not assigned here. So it will search in B1 and then in B2. So first it is actually test value is found in B1. So it will not search later on. So 30 will be output, okay? And what we, I was telling, uh, in place of B1, if I write B2 first, suppose I write B2 first, and then I write B1. So when we run this now, so in that case, first it will search in C, then in B2. So in B2, the value of test is 50. So if I run it, then it will give you output 50. okay so because b2 is first so it will first search in b2 it is found here so uh, output will be 50 okay so in that way it will go again here same program is here so like pass pass and all that it is uh, you have seen this program now look here <coughs> uh, uh, what we have done extra here test value is assigned 10 in the class c Okay, so in class C, uh, similarly class A pass, class B and you know, V1 pass, class B2 we have just written pass. In class C, we have given test value as 10. Now we are returning uh, test value. Okay, so uh, C is C1 is a object of class C and printing C1. So when we print it, uh, it will return the value of test that is here 10. So it will return 10. Okay, so like suppose. Uh, if I write test is equal to suppose 20 here, okay, here I write test is equal to 30, okay, here if I write 
test is equal to 40 okay then test is 10 like that so if i run it uh, what will be the output if i run this so anyone tell in class it is test is 20 10 so 10 again because you know this is uh, test is assigned 10 in the class c so first we will access in class c okay so it will return 10 if i run it still it will return 10 if I remove this now, suppose I remove this. So now it will search in C, it is not found. So it will search in B1. So now if I run, it will give you output 30. So it will give you 30 now, okay? If you remove here, you just write pass. And now if I run, so it will give you answer 40. So if so in exam, suppose this question may be asked, okay, and they will ask you the output. So this type of question will be there. Option will be 10, 20, 30, 40, like that. So you should know the order. Now it is 40 because uh, in C it is test value is not found. In uh, B1, it is not found. Okay. So C is a derived class of B1, B2. So it will search in B1. Then it will search in B2. So it is, and if I write right pass here again, so now if I run, so it will uh, print 20. Just 20. So this is the order of uh, inheritance. So this was the uh, when you have the, this type of program, uh, you can find this. Same program I am doing, now I will come to this. So what is saying now? Uh, next. For uh, determining the order in which the methods of classes will be accessed. So you want to determine and uh, using code like so Python provides the attribute double underscore MRO double underscore. Which stands for method resolution order. So double underscore MRO double underscore returns a list ordered by the classes in which search for method is to take place for example so see here so this is the same program just what i've done here uh, this we were doing earlier so here i just printed c c is the here class so c dot double underscore mro double underscore so it will return the method or order okay it will return the order actually so it will return you like yeah list of classes in which the search for methods is to take place so like the test value will search in which order so you know already uh, we you know so for class c if you want to uh, run this code so what is output corresponding to this so let me just remove all this now for now just for this point of time okay so if i run it what will happen c dot c is a class c dot double underscore mro so it will give you the method resolution order okay uh, for class c so, so look here so what is returning first it will search in class c then in b1 then in b2 then in class a and after that in class object Okay, here if you change B2, suppose I make it B2 first and then B1 second place. Now if you run this, so check. So the order will be class C, first we will search in class C, okay. Uh, then in class B1, then in, sorry, B2, you know, first we have taken B2. So then in B2, then in B1 and then in A, and then class object. So like built in class if it is. Okay, so this is clear. Uh, okay, so now this I will turn, so I will compute later on. So like here, if I check for B1 is a class, B1 dot MRO. So for class B1, what will be the method resolution order? So if you run it, so you can check. So 
this print b1.mro so this will be this one first search in b1 then in a then in class object object so this way okay so mro means method resolution order okay when you have uh, inheritance of classes in that case next we have so yes so but in the previous example sir if we if we give the pass like the pass statement as you gave earlier to show the outputs of every class if it accesses it so mm -hmm. sir if it gives the pass function sir then then also it will show in the mro function that it will uh, means detect through b1 then b2 then object yes it is telling you the order actually uh, it does it does not depend on the you are writing test value or you are writing pass it is just telling you the order okay sir just okay. it will tell you the order in case you write pass or any any other value it will not differ okay sir. okay sir understood and now uh, so this we have this we have seen okay so same program is uh, this program we have seen already test to the pass pass and uh, 50 and all this so they want just they want to tell you that uh, how what is the order okay order of resolution so you have seen first when you call object of class c so first we search in c then go to the super class of c so there are two super classes here b1 b2 the first it will go into b1 if it is found then okay it will print otherwise go into other super class b2 if it is not found then a is a super class of b1 b2 both then it will search in b1 uh, a class so here uh, it will found in b1 so output will be 50 so that i written here the output of the this example is 50 so if you run this example output will be 50 because uh, in c test value is not assigned in b1 not assigned in b2 it is assigned so it will return this one here uh one minute this done yeah so this is the last part of the slide okay so this we have seen and next we have this built in functions for classes so uh, to find whether a class is a subclass of another class one may use the function is subclass okay like we were checking is lower is upper and it will returning true false according to the condition so uh, one may use the function is subclass that takes two argument sub and super so sub means subclass super means superclass so uh, the syntax is is subclass you will write the subclass you want to check whether this is subclass or superclass so the function is subclass returns true if sub is a subclass of the class super and false otherwise so for example here i have implemented the same in this example only we are printing is subclass b1a so we are checking whether b1 is a subclass of super class a so it will turn either true or false okay so if b1 is a subclass of class a then it will return true otherwise it will return false so we have already done it so here you can check the first is true so this one is the first so it is true means b1 is a subclass of a b1 is a subclass of a subclass derived class are same word uh, super class and base class or parent class these are same word so b1 is a subclass of super class a so it is true okay if you change the order like uh, if i just below it if i write i will change the order so suppose i write a first and uh, we'll write b1 later on so what we want to check here in this print uh, we want to check whether a is a subclass of b1 or not so we know that b1 is a subclass of a a is not a subclass of b1 a is a super class so but uh, the syntax uh, tells us that the first no, first uh, you will class you will write whether you want to check whether the first is a subclass of the second so we are checking here that a is a subclass of b1 or not so output will be false okay so second you can check it is false so second one is false because a is not a subclass of b1 a is a super class 
but here it is true because b1 is a subclass of a similar way so i checked whether b2 is subclass of a so true c is a subclass of a yes because c is a subclass of b1 b2 and b1 b2 both are subclass of a so that's why c will also be a subclass of a so when we checked whether c is a subclass of a so answer will be true so it will give you true somewhere yes there will see on the fourth print here so again you can do so each subclass uh, so each subclass you want to check whether uh, the this subclass is a subclass of the superclass so whatever you will write first so you want to check whether this first argument is a subclass of the other argument so you will write this one next we have to find whether the instance object is an object of class class 1 so we use the function is instance so what is the syntax syntax is is instance object of class 1 so we want to check whether this first argument whatever right is an object in class 1 or not so again this function returns true if either object is an instance class of class 1 or it is instance class of a subclass of a class of class of class class 1 so false otherwise for example you look here so uh, here you know what this c1 in the example this c1 we were using so this c1 is a is an instance okay or object of the class c capital c so capital c is a class and c1 we have taken an object so we know c1 is a is an instance of class capital c so if you want to check whether so the c here is instance so first we have used here yeah is instance so whether c1 is an object of class a so out will be true because c1 is an object of class c and class c is a subclass of b1 b2 and b1 b2 are subclasses of a so c1 will also be a object of class a like according to definition it will turn true because you know it will turn true if either object is a instance of a class 1 or it is an instance of the subclass of class class 1 okay so here you are uh, indirectly if you see so c1 is an instance of class capital c and capital c is a subclass of capital a so that way it will turn true so this uh, you will check this is the first second third fourth fifth from the bottom So one, two, oh, why it is here? So first you don't have to do this. Okay. So we were checking this each instance, this one. So fourth print from the bottom. So one, two, three, four. Fourth from the bottom, this one. So this true means C one is a sub C one is a an object of class A. or it will turn true okay subclass of class a again c1 is subclass of b true aayega hai na c1 is a uh, c1 is an object of class b2 so it will turn true c1 is class of c true okay so we, if you want to check whether an object or instance okay is an a uh, object of class so you can check it will turn true if it is this first argument is an instance of class and next we have to find whether an instance instance object contains an attribute attribute a double t r we have taken variable okay we use the function has attribute so this syntax is has attribute so a double t r only will write and there are two parameters so first is object second is attribute so you have to check whether uh, this object will contain this attribute so this function returns true if instance object contains an attribute a double t r okay and false otherwise so for example so for that we have different examples so i will come here okay check this so each subclass this we have done each subclass each instance i will only come here okay so check a has attribute meet staff so i will first introduce this word so meet staff uh, we had this 
मिड स्टाफ वॉज वन ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट इन द क्लास अपॉइंटमेंट सो लुक हेयर मिड स्टाफ दिस इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट इन द क्लास अपॉइंटमेंट दिस इज द क्लास अपॉइंटमेंट ओके सो वट आर द वेरिएबल्स इन द अपॉइंटमेंट डे मंथ इयर आर्स मिनट सेकेंड डिस्क्रिप्शन दीज आर द वेरिएबल्स और एट्रीब्यूट्स इन द क्लास अपॉइंटमेंट so uh, just i want to tell you what is this meet staff so this meet staff is an object of the class appointment and we are checking whether this object meet staff has an attribute date of birth so you have checked there were no variable date of birth there were only day month like that na so the Uh, attribute here are day, month, year, hours, minute, second, description. So there is no date of birth here. Okay, so that's why uh, here we are getting false. False we are getting why? Because meet staff this object has no attribute date of birth. But the meet staff this class not class sorry this object or this instance has an attribute hours. We have we have seen just so that's why it is turning true. That uh, now this has attribute. So you were checking whether this object has an attribute this. So it will return true if that object has an attribute this. If not, it will return false like this. And next we had here get attribute. Okay. So the function get attribute and the set attribute. Okay. These are two different keywords. Uh, two different functions uh, may be used to retrieve. or set respectively the value of so the value uh, vl of an attribute a double tr okay of an instance object as shown below so like this is a syntax get attribute object attribute okay set attribute so uh, this object has attribute this and you want to set the value to that attribute okay so this is a modifier this is accessor one minute and uh, now the last is uh, the function delete attribute okay used to delete an attribute of the instance object as follows so this is syntax delete attribute object attribute so from this object attribute will be deleted so whatever you write here that will be deleted so here we have has attribute okay so it was is subclass is instance this two were to check for uh, subclass is a subclass or superclass or object of class c you were checking here has attribute were checking whether that object has that attribute now i will see example of get attribute set attribute and delete attribute okay so so now check here uh get attribute mid staff so mid staff is an object and ours is attribute so you want to get the value of that attribute in the object mid staff so that is 10 so you will check here uh, the uh, r was 10 you know and what we are doing now actually uh, it depends where is program so, uh, you may import that like uh, i have also imported here try to import it so similarly you can access okay so get attribute will give you the value of that attribute uh, from that class uh, from that object Okay, value get attribute will give you the value of that attribute or variable from that object or instance. Now set attribute will set the value of that attribute. Okay, so in mid staff object second is one the one of the variable and that will be set as nine. So it will be assigned nine. So like mid staff we are printing. So like fifteen one. So when whenever uh, like when you have that program appointment class. in that so this was the appointment like 15 january 2022 and time was 9 10 09 so second initially it was 00 so 
now it is assigned 9 okay so second is assigned uh, 0 9 now by this okay and like here the last is delete attribute so in the object meet staff r's attribute attribute means variable okay so attribute or variable same word okay instance or object these are same word so meet staff is an uh, object or instance in that appointment class and ours is variable so we are deleting that and now we are printing that meet staff so what it is giving the output you check here appointment object has no attribute ours because we have deleted that attribute so we have deleted the attribute ours from that object so when we want to print that so it will give you uh, it will tell you that it has no attribute ours so it will not be you know, able to print that mid staff object because our object is miss uh, our attribute is missing because we have deleted it okay so that's all in the then you have this okay so the last part was this so just we have seen uh, today in the class 2 what is the order of resolution okay so first it will check in the subclass then the superclass in order okay then we have seen some built in functions for classes like each subclass each instance has attribute get attribute set attribute delete attribute so these are some syntax you check it because in exams you have seen the paper pattern so like in mcq they ask and they give you the name they will ask you what is their meaning and then four options will be there so like that so this is your uh, lecture 11 like chapter 11 from the book now we can see assignment also so assignment link i have shared already with you so you have to upload it by 7th okay you have four five days so actually these are some theoretical questions here also so okay let's see what are so define a class complex number write operations for addition subtraction multiplication using the notation of operator overloading so one program in the ppt you have seen like we were adding two points so class point we have defined or if you want to see it so like here you can check so this is a first question so complex class we have defined then it has object a b these two are complex number and then we are uh, we are writing uh, uh, defining addition corresponding to two object so one is a self other is others you may write self one self two these are two object of the class complex and then how you will add so what is the meaning of add you have to explain and you know, how will you add complex number two complex number so the real so you know already the real part in ready part so it has a real part image ready part two parts like a plus iota b and a complex number mostly we write a plus iota b so we are taking it as an ordered pair okay so a b so a is self dot a plus other dot a means you add the real part of both complex number and then uh, that is the a and then add the imaginary part and if you take as a order pair a comma b so like you add the first coordinates of both the point and you add the second coordinate and then you return complex a b so your sum will return the first number in the both order pair sum and second number then you define the subtraction define multiplication then we are returning that complex number a plus iota b type you know? so we have taken that iota so we are returning string a plus iota b c1 we have given uh, 1 plus 2 iota like that 1 2 and uh, c2 we have given 3 plus 4 iota then we are printing c1 c2 then sum so this sum plus is defined here this is due to this you now we have defined the meaning of plus in class so for every class you have to define like uh, for the string it is already defined for uh, list it is already defined uh, sum of two strings sum of two lists already defined they are built in classes but the class you define so you have to define the meaning of that operator so what is the meaning of plus in c1 c2 uh, in class this complex what is the meaning of difference what is the meaning of product so you have to explain it so in this way you can do okay 
second is what define function overloading so this definition you can write from the book or from the ppt how function overloading works in python this is a theoretical question uh, you have to write subjective answer then explain okay uh, what will be the output of the following python script defined in the uh, functioning of the script is okay so program is given to you okay so we can see class compute is defined and defining the function area with object self and variables are x so initially x is none y is none okay default values are none so if x is not none and y is not none then return x into y so like x and y both are given uh, then you return x into y so like area of rectangle you are finding okay if both are given if x is not none so only x is given in that case you return x into x so means x square so means area of square okay with side length x next else so means none of them are given so return zero okay if if x and y none of them are given so in that case you return zero and now object we are taking compute so with this and now what we are doing so there are three parts in the question and they asked you to what will be the output of the following python script define all the function of this yeah so first part is paint area value object dot area object this is the object dot area so this function and we have given no values of x y so what will be the output we'll tell uh, one by one i think so okay let me ask 